Hey guys, what's up? Welcome to Zero Reviews Tech. I'm currently recording on the front camera of the Ligu T5C. I'm currently in Toronto and it's currently hailing right now. It's not that cold, but it's a little bit windy, so it can get cold when the wind kind of blows on you really hard. But yeah, just wearing a sweater, pants, and slippers. That's all I need. Hey guys, what's up and welcome to Zero Reviews Tech. And I have the Ligu T5C with the new Spreadtrum. SC9853i processor and I honestly had very very high hopes for this phone as well as the processor not because it was cheap it was 130 bucks not on sale and 100 bucks on sale making it around the same price as a Xiaomi Redmi low-end phones it had a Spectrum SC9853i chip which is supposed to give as good performance as at least an MTK6750 and getting a little bit close to the Helio range of processors and there's also three gigs of RAM, decent RAM. But as I tested this phone more and more, I started finding more and more problems with this phone. And let's see what problems there were in this phone. There is surprisingly one area in this phone that is actually very good, and that would be the camera, which is usually the opposite in most other Chinese phones. So let's start with the build quality. So the build quality here is actually quite good. You have a glass on the front and you have a metal body on the back, as well as plastic slash rubber on the top and the bottom um, for reception. And it actually feels very nice in the hand. The only downside is that it's not bezel-less, so, um, so it's actually kind of big. Um, but the thing is that this phone is also pretty thin as well, and it feels pretty good in the hand. This phone also has a microphone jack as well as a U uh, micro USB port, which I know uh, many people are hoping for a uh, USB-C, but no, this is a cheap phone, so no USB-C here. And we also have a uh, have our power buttons on the side, and the power button here is textured, so you can tell the difference between the power button and the volume buttons over here. And then we have the SIM slot. And this is the front of the screen. And here we have the home slash fingerprint sensor. And at the bottom, um, there's really nothing here. There should have been capacitive buttons here, but no, there aren't any capacitive buttons here. And this one, just like the Maze Alpha, the home button isn't very responsive. And I'll talk more about that later. But let's turn this phone on. So as you can see, the bezels on this phone are very big. They're the old style of phone. It's definitely not bezel-less. Look at how big the top and the bottom bezels are. They're actually quite massive. And the side bezels here are not small either. So this definitely looks like an old phone and, and doesn't look like a bezel-less phone. For example, let me reach over and get my Verni X. Look at that. That's the difference between a bezel-less phone and the old style of phones here as well. But yeah, that being said, this phone is pretty light as well. So that's good. So here we have a regular 16 by 9, 1920 by 1080 p screen. And I really like the screen here. Stuff looks very crisp and clear when you're reading news or you're reading books or magazines. And when you're looking at colorful pictures, for example, these, you can see that the colors are incredibly saturated, very deep, very clear, and they also look very nice. And for example, if you look over here, um, if you look at the bokeh effect in the background and the dog in the foreground, you can see that that even the dog's fur is very well defined on this uh, screen because this is a this is a very good LCD screen. Granted, it's not an AMOLED screen, so there will be some some colors that are not as saturated as what you find on an AMOLED, but it's still more than good enough for an LCD screen. And in fact, it's actually pretty good as well. In terms of max brightness, it doesn't get very bright. This is almost the brightest um, at, uh, what you'll get from the screen. So. If you do get into a situation with very bright sunlight, you probably will have a lot of difficulty seeing this screen in direct sunlight. And the other thing is there is no Gorilla Glass on the screen. It's probably regular glass. And so that's why they have supplied a screen protector so that you don't scratch the glass. So let's take a look at the audio now. The audio volume here is average. It doesn't get too loud. So you will get into situations where you have trouble hearing what the speaker is outputting if you're in a situation with too loud um, environmental noise. But if you go to a softer place, you can hear it pretty well. The audio quality is also pretty average. I didn't find anything special um, in this uh, audio. The clarity is okay. The uh, mids and trebles are okay. The bass is also okay. It is a bit lacking in bass as are many other Chinese phones, but it's still a pretty good um, speaker. So let's uh, have a listen to this clip over here.
All right, so it was pretty hard for me to get an accurate read on the battery life because I just found out that this phone does have a virus and the virus is a Trojan something AM, which means that one of the functions of that Trojan is to slow down the phone and make it unusable or the device if it's a computer or whatever. So I couldn't tell if the Trojan was draining the battery life or it was something else. But nevertheless, the battery life here is pretty bad. Standby battery drain, I was getting about 1% of battery drain per hour. And I got about, I think, two to three hours of screen on time, and that's about it, which is pretty disappointing. I was expecting more from a 14 nanometer Cortex A53 processor, which is pretty much exactly what the Snapdragon 625 is. And it does like 10 hours with a, with a 3000 milliamp hour battery. All right, so before we even start, I am very disappointed to say that I received a message on YouTube saying that there was a virus in the launcher. Now, when I had scanned it with the AVG antivirus, which is usually what I use to scan these phones, I didn't receive any message. Like all, all it told me was that it didn't have a virus and that I needed to resolve my issues such as disabling installation of unknown sources and, and all that kind of setting stuff. But then I used malware bytes instead and I did get a report that there was a virus on my phone. There, see, one malware found by Malwarebytes. It's an Android Trojan Gorilla AM, and it's found in the Ligu default home launcher. So it's not even like installed by by like a uh, reseller like Geek Buying or Gearbest or Banggood. It's actually installed by Ligu. So like, what is Ligu trying to do? I mean, they're an official partner for Tottenham Hotspur, like, and they still install viruses and phones. Like, I don't understand what their rationale is for doing this kind of thing, but. I proceeded to review the rest of the phone because it's a throwaway account, Google account anyway, so I don't really care. But yeah, so this phone is very slow and I don't know if it's because of the virus or because the uh, Spectrum chipset is really crappy. So this thing gets, it's very slow when you first turn it on, but the more you use it, the faster it does get. Um, and so as you can see, swiping now is fine. But when I first started up this phone, the swiping and like, accessing like the notification shade and everything it was all like laggy and slow but as i used it more it got smooth and now it's actually pretty decent it's actually uh, almost on par with a uh with a xiaomi phone with the mi ui but there is one area where it is pretty slow and that would be multitasking so this thing has three gigs of ram ram management here is so bad that at one point i had modern combat open and i switched to go to google chrome and the entire phone just froze up i couldn't even press the home button and after I did, it took about two minutes before the home home button like showed up and it was insane. It was so, so slow. And the other thing to note is that the home button here is very unresponsive. You have to touch it really hard in order to, uh, for it to activate. So you see if I touch it like this, nothing happens, but I have to touch it hard and then it goes back to the home button. I'll show, I'll show you that again. Tap, 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 nothing. Press it hard, it goes back. I don't like that. I like a very responsive home button as found on my Xiaomi Mi Note 3 but here we have to make do with a rather unresponsive home button. The fingerprint sensor on the home button is actually pretty accurate, but there is a huge problem with it. And sometimes it just doesn't activate. See like this, like I'll tap it and nothing will happen. Absolutely nothing will happen. But if I turn the screen on like this and I tap it, it works, no problem. So it seems like the fingerprint sensor isn't always on. Um, it seems that you have to, to tap it a few times before, you, uh, before the fingerprint sensor start, starts reading your finger. Which is, kind of, which is kind of disappointing because that's not very good software either. I also did a full gaming video on the Ligu T5C uh, before and you can check that out, but I will show you some gaming footage here so you can take a look at how choppy it is. Um, some of the stuff is okay and some of the stuff is pretty choppy, which is very sad. And it's because the spread trim chip has a very weak graphics chip in this. So the uh, graphics performance is not very good. So I was very surprised with the camera and the phone, very pleasantly surprised. It's able to take some very decent photos. In fact, I would say that the quality of the photos here are on par with the Verni X at its best and the Ulephone Power 3 after the camera software update. There is a ton of detail in the photos and you can really see that there is 
a lot of color detail and saturation in the photos as well. And take a look at this photo of my dog. You can see that the snowflakes are pretty clearly on his body, very crisp and very easy to see. And I'm very surprised that the camera is so good. It's just too bad that the rest of the phone is bad. So I have to say that I am very dis disappointed with the Ligu T5C. I had very high hopes for this phone as well as the Spreadtrum processor, but I have been let down in pretty much every conceivable way software wise like hardware the uh, body of the phone feels good and the quality of the screen is good as well but the spreadtrum chip combined with the fact that ligu put a virus in the um, android launcher is just inconceivable like i don't understand why they would do that putting a uh, trojan inside the launcher it's it's just madness and yeah. However, there is a bright spot in the phone, even though it will never be enough to get past all these problems. And that would be the camera. The camera quality here is very good. I was surprised by how good the camera quality was on this phone. This phone is hundred bucks on sale, 130 not on sale. And I would say it can take better photos than the Xiaomi Redmi 4A. And that is a very good phone on its own. So I'm very surprised that the Ligu T5C can match the Xiaomi Redmi 4A in terms of camera quality. It's just too bad that the rest of the phone is crap and that and there's a virus on it as well. So no matter what, you should never ever buy this phone ever. And any other Ligu phone that you do buy or consider buying, make sure you check reviews first to make sure there's no virus on the phone itself. So I want to know your thoughts on why Ligu would put a virus on their phone as that seems like a super, super dumb thing to do. Thank you so much for watching. Likes and subs would definitely be appreciated. And I'll see you guys in the next one.